Hello! Today I am reading another book for Sunday vlogging. Um, as you know, I like to read books to my grandkids and any other kids that want to listen to the book. So, um, this month I have been talking about Halloween. And so this week I am talking about Halloween books. And I want to start with one of my favorites, which is this one, um, The Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown. And yes, it was made of the movie. And this book was actually written in 1967. Um, so it is one of my favorites because Charlie or Snoopy is one of my actually favorites. So let's get started, it, shall we? What's cute about this is it's actually dedicated to who else would you think? The Great Pumpkin. <laughs> so there was a general feeling around the neighborhood that Linus always acted a bit peculiar during the month of October. Each year, he got a piece of his nicest stationery and wrote a letter to someone called the Great Pumpkin. It really annoyed Lucy, his sister, because she thought it made her look bad. Snoopy thought it was the funniest thing he had ever heard. The only person who thought Linus just might be right about the Great Pumpkin was Sally. She listened very carefully as Linus explained the whole story to her. Each year on Halloween night, the great pumpkin rises out of the pumpkin patch that he thinks is the most sincere and flies through the air with his pack of toys for all the good little children in the world. The other kids in the block were much more interested in making costumes to wear when they went out that night for tricks or treats. Charlie Brown had intended to look like a ghost, but he had a little trouble with the scissors and ended up looking more like a peeled potato. Lucy was proud of her witch's mask because she always said that a person should wear a costume that was in direct contrast to her actual personality. The most original costume, if you want to call it that, was sworn by Snoopy, for he had found a flyer's helmet and goggles and a beautiful scarf. He looked exactly like a World War I flying ace. Now, Linus had convinced Sally that going out for tricks or treats not only was a waste of time, but was downright wrong for what he maintained that on the only way to celebrate Halloween was to sit in a pumpkin patch and wait for the arrival of the great pumpkin. He told Sally that a person had to be very sincere in his waiting and never say if the great pumpkin comes, but always when the great pumpkin comes. One little slip like that, he declared, declared Linus, can cause the great pumpkin to pass you by. They looked around the field where they crouched and Linus declared the great pumpkin has just got to pick this patch because it is very sincere. In fact, there's nothing but sincerity here as far as the eye can see. Lucy, Charlie Brown and their friends had just finished knocking at the door of a house asking for trick or treats. Lucy had asked for an extra apple for my stupid brother who can't come along because he's sitting in the pumpkin patch waiting for the great pumpkin. Each looked in the bag he was carrying with him. After the others had said they had found things like cookies, candy, gum, and apples, Charlie Brown said, all I got was a rock. Or Charlie Brown. No one noticed that Snoopy was missing. He had gone off by himself and had climbed on top of his doghouse, which he had pretended was a World War I flying plane. Here the World War I flying ace taking off in his sop with camel. In his imagination he zoomed through the sky while anti-aircraft shells burst all around him. 
Just then, he spotted the enemy plane he was looking for. It was the Red Baron. See him flying through the air? Before Snoopy could turn his plane to the attack, the Red Baron swooped down upon him and riddled his plane with bullets. Smoke poured from behind and Snoopy fought desperately to control his plane. With amazing skill, he guided his badly dam damaged Southwest Camel to a crash landing and leaped out before the enemy could find him. Now he had to make his way back across no, win, no man's land to the aerodrome. There he goes. And he's going to cross the river. And across the thing. In the meantime, Linus and Sally were still scanning the skies for the appearance of the great pumpkin. I hope you haven't been trying to fool me, warned Sally. And if you try to hold my hand, I'll slug you. Listen, cried Linus, I hear something. There was a low rustle in the grass around the pumpkin patch. Do you think it's the great pumpkin? find out. Suddenly a strange silhouette appeared before their eyes. It's the great pumpkin cries Linus. He's rising out of the pumpkin patch. He toppled over backwards in a faint. been robbed shrieked Sally I waited all night in a pumpkin patch and all I saw was a stupid beagle she grabbed Linus by the front of his shirt and shook him until his eyes rattled I believed in you I missed tricks and treats to sit in the pumpkin patch you owe me restitution Sally stalked off in anger, and Linus was left alone. Almost four o'clock in the morning, Lucy woke up and decided to see if Linus had come in yet. His bed was empty. Where do you think he might be? She put her coat on and went out to the pumpkin patch. There was Linus, curled up on the ground with his blanket. He was so cold, he was shaking all over. Lucy led him back home and helped him to get into bed. She's a good sister after all, isn't she? The next morning, Charlie Brown and Linus were leaning on a wall, staring into space. Each was thinking about last night. I went out for tricks or treats and all I got was a bag of rocks, moaned Charlie Brown. Did you ever get to see the great pumpkin? Nope, said Linus. He never showed up. Well, don't be too disappointed. I've done some stupid things in my life, too. Stupid, shrieked Linus. What do you mean stupid? Just wait until next year. I'll find a pumpkin patch and I'll sit in the pumpkin patch and it'll be so sincere pumpkin patch that the great pumpkin will come. Just you wait and see. I'll sit in the pumpkin patch and I'll see the great pumpkin. Just wait until next year. Charlie Brown sighed. <sighs> the end.
So did you like that story of the great pumpkin? <laughs> it's the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Like I said, it's one of my favorites, and I hope it'll become a your favorite too. Hope you've enjoyed the story. Until next time, this is Nayla Moon and Grandma to some of us, some of you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.